Hi guys, this is Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Welcome back to my channel. So we're here for another one of our mass making sessions and today we're going to make these little fold out um, pockets slash um, fold out journaling spots. Um, now I've got an apology to make. The video goes very waffly because I'm kind of just trying and experimenting with you guys, you know, here on camera. So I thought it would be really helpful to come and show you what we end up with because all my waffle and things you might just give up watching me but this is basically what we're going to end up with is just this pull out journaling piece here like that and then you've got all this journaling obviously on the back like that and then in this particular instance I have used string as a closure however as you will see as you go through the video I do experiment with other sorts of closures and you know I'm sure I have not exhausted the closure options and things so very much a kind of work in progress um, but yeah I thought that I would share the basic idea with you guys and the basic concept and then you guys I'm sure will come up with some amazing amazing ideas of you know different things to do with these and you know I'm sure you don't need any of my kind of um, guidance or ideas at all. Um, so I hope you stick with me though because we do end up making quite a few and um, yeah I think they're going to provide quite versatile pieces in your journals. So enjoy the video everyone and I hope you get some big big lots of uh... but like I say I mean you ladies out there you're just amazing and I'm sure that you've got probably tons more amazing ideas that you could do with these than I have. So um, yeah I'm sure that you won't be short of all different kind of ideas that you could use these for. But just really, really nice. And again, just, you know, make them up. Well, I mean, up to you, really. But I've made mine up all plain. So now they can be completely finished as I like. So, you know, if I wanted to then suddenly stitch them in and make, you know, pockets from these, I could do that. But obviously, if I want to keep them as the fold-out piece, then that's also fine. So, you know, we've just got sort of maximum versatility, really. And, um, yeah, I hope that you like doing them i hope you make some i hope i didn't put you off with my waffle at the beginning of the video um but yeah thank you so much for watching and i will see you guys again soon thanks then bye what we could do is make these little fold out pieces for your journals so i'm going to kind of demonstrate um you know what these are and i mean obviously being my my videos these are going to be super simple and then we'll kind of explore some things that you can do, some options that you can do to actually, you know, attach them to your journal and kind of use them in your journal. So I've brought along a variety of A4 pages. Um, I have also got some 12 by 12 pages, actually, that are just sat to the side, you know, left over from last week, which, to be honest, we probably, you know, I don't see any reason really why we couldn't use some of those as well, actually. Um, so let me just pull a couple of those in because I'm all about trying to use things this year, as we know. Um, yeah, I mean, I think you could probably get away with this as well. But anyway, we will try with an A4 one first. So again, what I'm going to do is try and use things that are double-sided um, because you will end up, you know, seeing both sides. So they're either going to be double-sided or they're going to be like coffee dyed on the back. Obviously, I do have some here that are plain. Um, you know, I'd need to ink those up if I want to have kind of something on the back. So what I'm going to do is cut my pieces down. So I'm just going to cut them kind of through like that lengthways. So like that. And then what I want to do is concertina them up. So this is quite thick paper. This is like 200 or this could even be 250 GSM paper slash card so it's much thicker than regular copy paper I do have some here that are copy paper and we'll just kind of play around and see what's going to work best but once you've got your piece all you want to do is actually then concertina it up to form your kind of foldy fold out piece so I'm going to go with this edge here which is like the straightest edge if you see what I mean because it's not the edge I cut and you can just bone folder that down like that and then you can go in and concertina the next piece up now I think it's probably quite a good you know practice to not go too too high because if you go really high you're going to bulk your piece out so 
you know, just kind of play it by ear, but, you know, go probably not the full height, if you see what I mean. Or, you know, not, not too high, because then you're going to have lots of bulk. So this, to me, looks, you know, pretty good. So this, basically, is what we're going to be making. And then what you've got is, like, your fold-down piece. And obviously, if you then fold it up, you've got lots of journaling space on the back, if you've got quite a plain piece of paper. But when you've folded it up like this, you've actually got sort of pocket type effects going on here. Now, I was then a little bit, um, you know, uh, stumped as to how you would actually attach this to a journal page. So let me just pull in a journal. Hold on a second. So I'm just going to show you. Oops. Try and find a page with nothing on, which of course is a problem. Oops, pretty much pretty much every page has got something on. Right, okay, here we go. Okay, so what I'm thinking is if this were attached to a page, you could glue it either top or bottom, wouldn't matter, um, depending on obviously, you know, then either pull out at the top or pull out at the bottom. So let's just say, for example, if we glued this on at the bottom, uh, uh, sorry, at the top, you could again, you could just glue it on three sides here and then you'd have like a secret pocket here like that you'd then have your foldy pieces here like this and then what you'd want to do is obviously have some sort of stopper on the page and again we're going to have obviously stoppers here as well on these or you could obviously paper clip them so for instance I'm just kind of you know, giving you an example here. Let's just say we had a frame there as a stopper and then we could have, you know, this here, which would be glued down, which would then be tucking these in. And so how this would work is you would basically pull it out of here and then it would untuck like that. And then you'd have your journaling space there. So does that make sense? I know it's a little bit waffly and obviously not really great because I'm not actually gluing it into a journal. So you're not really kind of seeing it properly in use. Um, but that's the kind of thing because I thought, well, actually, you know, you also then have got potential to kind of use these as pockets whilst it's... Oh, sorry, I'm just grabbing whatever I've got kind of on the desk. So, I mean, I know these are not journaling cards, obviously, but... You could potentially use these as pockets and then you take your pieces out, untuck this from here and then pull it out. You've got this pretty paper here, journaling space there and then you've got this secret pocket, whoops, secret pocket here, which obviously if this was glued in, you know, like that and then that would just, you know, slide in under there as well. So, I mean, I think they're quite versatile and I think you've got lots and lots of different options for these. I mean, as I say, they're a bit of a kind of, um, what's the word? You know, it's a bit um, of a shame that I'm not actually gluing it into a, to a page because obviously it's harder to work out what I'm trying to say. Alternatively, you could obviously glue it in at the bottom. So for instance here, you know, glue it in along there. And then you'd have your pull out going at the top. And again, you could obviously journal on the back. And then it would all just tuck neatly back in there. So, you know, you might find that that's going to work better. But again, you could then have like a little piece glued on here, which would just act as a, you know, tuck to keep everything held in and closed in place. So, you know, you can see probably here that's how bulky it is at the side. So although it is folding out and it kind of looks like it's bulky, obviously once your journal's been closed a few times, you can squish it down with a bone folder and things, it actually would go quite flat. If you were worried, however, I mean, you could always put a paper clip to kind of give it, you know, hold it, hold it in place a little bit better. Um, and then the top piece, you know, that's free flowing. I mean, you could even have a little tab on there. I think they're really quite nice and yeah I definitely think they have you know as people kind of say in that expression you know they have legs don't they so let's just kind of decorate this up a little bit 
so that you can see, you know, a bit more what I'm talking about because I realise that as this is like a, a bit of a concept item, you know, it's not probably that helpful, the fact that I haven't actually, you know, done one to actually glue into a journal. So I've got my box here or my um, container here of ready-made tabs. So I'm just going to see what tab might be nice on here. Oops. Oh, that one's nice, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, definitely like that one. So I'm just going to glue this in or on on here. <clears throat> oh, excuse my hot glue, it's been on overnight. I was kind of doing some stuff yesterday and um, yeah, then kind of didn't end up going back to it. So yes, very naughty, it's been on the whole night. Okay. So that's my little tab piece there. And then another alternative, you could obviously use um, little Velcro dots. Now, the only thing is if you use the Velcro dots like in here, you're obviously not really going to be able to use it as a pocket. Um, but, you know, you might be able to kind of use Velcro dots maybe like at the ends. So let me pull in my Velcro dots and just show you how that would be. The idea actually came to me when I was watching a video by Angela Kerr. She was making some, um, oh, what did she call them? Uh, pocket, pocket full of posies, I think she called them. And I thought, oh, actually, if you didn't stitch those around, you know, I just thought there's no reason why you couldn't use these as, you know, little fold out pieces. So just being really super stingy here. So got my Velcro dots. Just going to put one here and one this side, like that. So fold them. That's that one. And then we could do exactly the same, obviously, for the one above. I just got my Velcro dots from um, Amazon. Yeah, I just searched in Velcro dots. I'm not sure what size mine are. Uh, what does it say? One centimetre. They're one centimetre. Which actually, they look smaller than one centimetre to me. But but hey, what do I know? Let's face it. So, so then we've got this one that we would just then Velcro dot that. Okay, now bearing in mind, it's going to glue on on the bottom. So if I again pull that page back in, like that. So obviously if I were to glue here, like that, then that's going to be attached there. And then you could obviously, whoops, pull this out. Oops, my Velcro dot came apart, but pull it out like that and then you've got your journaling stuff or journaling space on the back. And then it obviously tucks back in like that. I mean, personally, I think probably, you know, a paperclip would probably be best. Um, I like the idea of a closure, but I think, you know, a bit of an extra sort of helping hand would be a paperclip, to be honest. Again, I mean, you could maybe use magnets. They would perhaps work. You could put, again, little magnets down the side. They might be quite nice, except they're going to get quite heavy because you'd have, you know, like four sort of magnets on there, really. Um, which is fine, but when you then turn the page, if it was really heavy, you're going to have this effect going on. So, yeah, I mean, it's kind of worth having a bit of a play around. But I think they're quite cool, aren't they? And, you know, I mean, again, you could even have them sideways on. Obviously, this is a little bit too big for this page. But if I were to just trim this down, you could then have this whoops, sideways. So it pulls out sideways. So, I mean, actually, I actually really like them. I know I'm making a big hash of doing this video and you're probably not sold on this as an idea. I can't say as I blame you. I mean, even, you know, you could even have something down here as a kind of... Um, you know, 
stopper or closure or something like that if it was a sideways on one well i mean you could even have it to the side i guess if you had a you know a long one obviously mine's quite bulky because i've got those velcro dots but if it didn't have those there's no reason why you couldn't have something to the side holding that down so yeah i mean i think they're quite cool and yeah definitely think that they're worth you know worth having some to hand because i can see that they would be quite a versatile piece so i'm just going to kind of do a couple more and we'll have a bit of a sort of bit more of a play around so obviously i have this piece left so we'll just do exactly the same I wonder which side i cut this side by the looks of things so again just kind of using this really straight side you know the original side as my guide there so again just fold that in like that and bone folder it down just there and then take this one and then and then bone folder this one down like that I mean you could even fold this up as another pocket on the bottom you know that might be better to be honest because then you haven't just got that sort of completely plain piece there. You've got a pocket here, a pocket here, and a pocket here. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe that would be a quite a good idea. You could even then do some string closure. So you could have a piece down here, and then you could have the other piece actually attached onto the journal page. Or vice versa, you could have it on here and then the other piece on the journal page, if that makes sense. You know, so that you've kind of got it clamped into the actual journal itself. Obviously, if you had them both on the piece itself, it would keep it closed. Um, well, I guess it would keep it closed, yeah. Should we try that? Let's try it. I'm in, I'm in experiment mode. Sorry, everything's dropping off my shelf now. Um, in experiment mode so uh, yeah let's give this a try I hope this isn't really really confusing I feel confused myself so it probably probably is quite confusing to be honest but you know if you don't try things you will just never know will you so okay I'm thinking this might be end up being a long video because um, <laughs> we might end up kind of experimenting for such a long time that the actual mass making will be cut short so let's just again poke my holes through through these and then yeah if we had one say here like that okay let me just get my brass mm -hmm. Okey-dokey. Oh, not a blue one, definitely. Oh, I'll just be really boring and just go with my usual usual ones that I that I always love. I mean, they're just, to me, they're just the ones that I always, always, always love. You know, kind of sometimes I kind of try and mix it up a little bit and then I'm just never quite pleased with how it looks. So, you know, if you find something that works, then sometimes it's just best to stick stick with what you know that you like. Okay, so that's that one and then at the top we would whoops we would have this one like that and I do love oops, do love using these policy closure mechanisms I think you know they look really vintage don't they and you know just finish things off like in a really sort of vintage way so I'm thinking on this one that we would actually have this glued in like a pocket as opposed to a you know foldy out piece so we've got a fixed a fixed pocket here like that and then we'll get our string okay Tie this round here, like that. 
probably should have really done all of this prep before the video, but I saw the, you know, I saw the video by Angelica, kind of just then had this little idea go through my mind, folded one as a sort of prototype, and then, you know, I hadn't really kind of thought through the closing mechanisms, if I'm truthful, but I thought, you know, that they definitely would make a really interesting interesting piece for a journal so there we go Oops. I don't know why I'm being so so fiddly today because some some days we just have those those days don't we so I mean actually the string closure works quite well I thought that was going to be not working but so as you can see again you'd glue it here on this bottom piece and then you'd have your string closure so let me pull that journal back in to show you again. You know, because I do realise that obviously I'm probably making a bit of a pig's ear of this and it's probably much easier to see if you can sort of see how it would look on a journal page. So glue here would glue onto the page and then you've got your string mechanism here. Oops, am I going around that again? Oh, I don't know which way I had it. Oh, there we go. Like that, it's glued on down here and then you pull it out like that. And again, you know, because you've only glued it so far, you've got obviously the fold there. Oh, no, there. So, yeah, I mean, I think they're pretty cool, to be honest. And actually, I think that string closure works really nicely which, you know, I definitely had my doubts at first and thought, mm, I don't think that's really going to work. But yeah, the string closure works quite nicely. I've pulled it a little bit tight here. So that's a little something to be aware of is if you pull that string too tight, you're going to have the effect of your piece curving up. But so long as you don't pull it too tight, your piece is going to, you know, is going to stay there okay. Yeah, so I quite like those, to be honest. I mean... Like I say, I have made a bit of a bit of a hash of of showing you these, but I mean, you know, you guys are so clever. I'm sure that lots of you guys are coming up with things, you know, that I have not even entered my head. So, you know, do kind of as you as you what comes to your mind. I mean, again, that's it sideways on, and again, if we just then undo that string. And then you've got that whole pull out side and obviously it all folds back you've got all that journaling space in there so they're pretty cool aren't they i mean obviously the fact it's not glued onto the page it's not really kind of functioning properly because of course it's it's moving around um you know i mean i probably could actually even glue this into this this journal let me just check where where would be a good spot because this is not really a very heavy page um i don't really want to cover that up to be honest uh and this is a uh, you know very nearly complete journal so uh might be that i haven't really got a page spare that i can attach it to let's just see Oh, isn't that always the way? Yeah, I mean, there's not really a spare page going. Um, unless I have it there. That's that a bit strange. Hmm. Not really ideal, is it? Uh, oh, I'm going to have to put it on a thin, thin page, which this is, yeah, far from... Far from ideal, to be honest. Um, but I'm thinking just so that I can really show you, you know, properly how this would be in a journal. Because sometimes it really does help to actually see it glued down, doesn't it? Okay, well, let's just pop it in there. So I'm going to apply my glue to this section here. And just for speed, I'm going to obviously use hot glue like that. Okay. And I'm just going to literally glue the entire thing in there. I love this sideways on. Just, yeah, hadn't even occurred to me until I've come along to do the video that you could have these sideways on. But I think that's 
possibly my favourite way. I think it looks nicer than the, um, you know, the proper way round, to be honest. Okay, and so that's that. As you can see, I mean, it's not particularly flapping around. And once the journal's been closed a few times, it's going to sit, you know, even flatter. If, however, that was bothering you, you can always, you know, put a, um, what do you call it? You know, paper clip on there just to stop it from having just basically any movement at all, really. Uh, just wondering, do I want a tab on there? No, I'll just leave that. Right, so yeah, let me just grab a paper clip in just to show you what I'm talking about there. I've just got a tiny paper clip, which is just ideal because I've got a ruffle. Oh no, sorry, I haven't got a ruffle on the other page. Um, so I could just clip that on there. And then you could obviously take that clip off, undo the string, and you pull it out and you've got your journaling space. But in the meantime, obviously you've got these which are little pockets and even sideways on you're going to be able to put things tucked in there really so yeah I really like them to be honest I'm so sorry that we have gone all around the houses to actually get there but I hope that by gluing one into that journal it's made you know slightly more sense so let's just uh crack on and see if we can make some more so yes that was my um Victorian Florals set three, those papers. So I've got some other paper here. I'm just going to again do exactly the same thing. Just going to cut this down. Yeah, so I mean, this may be another one of those sort of mass makes where you're going to partially make it and then obviously finish it off when you actually come to use it because, you know. You don't know necessarily, are you going to have it sideways on? Are you going to have it, you know, um, lengthways or whatever? And depending on which way round you're going to have it, it might depend on the closure that you're going to want to use with it. Um, but I just think they're quite a, quite a nice little piece, aren't they? You know, and obviously they give quite a bit of journaling space because once you unfold them, you have got that big, you know, that big area, haven't you? Sorry, making a bit of a hash of this. This one is on very thick card. Well, not really card, but, you know, very thick paper. So, of course, it's a little bit tricky to fold it in. So, let's just trim that down. And again, just going to, I think, fold this up. Quite like the bottom being folded over, I've decided. I think that's quite nice. And I'm just going to trim that down, just because it's got a tiny bit of white showing, like that. Okay, and obviously, you know, you can ink that up and what have you. And then, yeah, use this kind of as you wish, whether you wanted, you know, a string closure or, you know, like the Velcro or paper clips or, you know, little, oops, little pieces kind of holding each piece shut. You can then play around when you come to use them. So I'm go just going to make a bunch of these. I think in their, you know, most naked form, if that makes sense. So that I really have got, you know, the options when I come to use them. So I'm just going to put that to one side. I'm not going to make a second one um, out of that paper. So I'll keep this paper for another week that we can do something else with. Okay. So I've got here some of my collage sheet just having a look yeah let's do one with this I think this would be gorgeous to be honest so then just cut it straight in half like that okay and just fold this up so, I mean, probably the trickiest part of these, to be honest, is actually, you know, getting your folds nicely, um, you know, and not wonky, which is why I think go for the straight edge that was the original edge of the paper, if you see what I mean. Because even if you cut with a paper trimmer, you know, there is a possibility of not cutting quite straight and things like that. So if you go with the, you know, the original edge of the, you know, as the original paper was purchased then fingers crossed you've got the best chance haven't you of getting the you know the really straight perfect edge really so that's the one that I think kind of 
use to line it up with. Now this one, unfortunately, this is not coffee dyed or anything on the back. So I would have to do that, you know, when I come to use it, but that's fine. So again, just going to fold this up as a little sort of pocket piece on the front. And then I'll just go in and glue that down which I don't think I did actually on the last one so I'll just pull the last one back in and we'll just glue the, the last one back as well okay and then I can just trim down this edge where it's not quite in line there we go. so they're really nice aren't they and you know I mean if then you've got a bunch folded up I mean you then suddenly thought, oh, you know, I don't want to use them like that. You can always stitch them around on the sewing machine. You know, they give you a lot of different options, don't they? And, you know, once you've got some folded up in the basic form, you can just then play around and do what you fancy doing on the day when you come to actually assemble them or use them. And, you know, let's face it, there's nothing nicer than a versatile piece where you've got lots of different options. You know, that's just great, isn't it? Okay, right, let's just now see what else we've got. Uh, okay. So, this, I can't remember whether this is... Okay, so we're just going to take this one. Now, this one is copy paper thickness. So it's much thinner paper. But I thought we'd do one in thinner paper so you can kind of see the difference really so and oh I've made a horrible job of cutting this now so but again I'm going to go in against this you know this proper proper purchased edge if you see what I mean rather than my shoddy cut it cut edge and again just then fold that over there okay and then just squish that down like that. And then we just go over here to bring that up as a pocket. So again, this has only been um, printed, you know, one-sided. So when I come to use this, I mean, I can just then paint this with some, you know, quick bit of coffee dye. So it's got something pretty on the back. Again, just going to go in. In fact, I'm just going to use my wet glue because this is just copy paper. I don't really want it going at all lumpy, which, you know, sometimes hot glue can go a bit lumpy. But obviously you don't really notice if your paper's quite thick, but you would notice obviously using just copy paper. So, yeah, just squish that down. Like that. Okay, let's bring some more paper in. So again, this is my Victorian florals. So let's just cut this one down. Again, I think this is set three as well. So let's chop that down. This one, obviously, this has been coffee dyed, and you know, as you can see, I've kind of got a bit of a bit of a tatty edge going on there again that doesn't really worry me in fact I can probably even just trim that off and we'll just have it slightly shorter so like that and ooh, which is my cut edge and the straight edge is that the straight edge yeah sometimes it's hard to tell to be honest and I'm not saying that's because my cutting's great <laughs> just think um probably that my eyesight's rubbish Okay, let's do it one fold at a time because I seem to be going very skew if here. Yeah, okay. And then we'll do the other one. Oh, I'm going to have to really trim this one down. I've really mucked this one up. Look at what's going on here. <laughs> So they're very forgiving, as you can see. You know, even if you have this kind of situation going on, you can just trim it down at the sides. So no problem there. Okay. We'll go there. Like that. 
Okay, again, I'll just bend that as the bottom sort of pocket like that okay so uh, yeah I feel like I've waffled on about the process here for a long long time so I do apologize it's not really turned out like a normal mess make has it we're normally much more relaxed than this and just chatting chatting about our week so I'll yeah stop chatting through the process now as I've said I'm not going to be assembling mine and finishing them off with closures and things I'm going to wait till I actually come to use them um so yeah for the time being we will just do the very bare you know bare bones of the assembly if you see what I mean so yeah let's just have a bit of a relax now before the um, video is finished so I hope everyone's having a good week obviously I realize it's only only Tuesday I mean for me it's only Monday Monday I tend to film these on a Monday so um, yeah how's it going for everybody really strange weather that we're having here I mean we had like that hot spell a few weeks ago thought summer was coming well summer seems to have disappeared again now so unfortunately um but it's just really strange because it keeps getting really sort of muggy so like today i've got long sleeves on as you can see i'm actually sweltering so yeah i'll probably have to get changed a bit later but it's that strange weather where you can't really be wearing short sleeves because it's not it's not really warm enough just yeah it can't really make up its mind I think at the moment which just weird very weird right so with this this is my pink Parisian papers yeah it's very strange but and today is the day when lockdown pretty much kind of finishes I mean our official date is the 21st of June so that's the date when literally you know lockdown is properly properly over but from today, it's it's pretty much over. I'm not even too sure actually what are the few things that aren't still able to open. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure to be honest. There just seem like there have been such a lot of different rules and you know things like that to kind of keep changing. That yeah, I've kind of lost track really a bit of where we are. But today is the day anyway that you know lots of things are reopening. So restaurants and things they're all reopening. I mean they've been allowed to open for a few weeks now, but only for takeaways and um, outside dining. Which of course because the weather's been pretty rubbish, you know those poor restaurants. I mean they must have had nobody dining outside really. Um, well, I say that. I mean, I did say about my experience a few weeks ago, didn't I, where then the tables were all booked. Um, but, yeah, I mean, on the whole, it's been rubbish, really. I mean, if it had been last year, obviously the weather was glorious the whole time, really, since, like, about March. So it wouldn't have been such a problem. But this year, definitely, it's it's not really been, like, dining out type weather. So... You know, I'm sure that the restaurants and things will all be very pleased that they're able to open from today. Um, I did see that cinemas are allowed to open. Our local cinema, unfortunately, isn't opening as yet. I don't know what's the schedule. I don't know whether it will be opening soon. Um, but yeah, at the moment, it's not opening by the looks of things. But then I'm thinking, you know, I'm not sure they have any films to show, to be honest, because... You know, I don't think they've been making films or anything like that. So, I mean, I'm not sure those cinemas that are opening, I haven't really got the foggiest clue what films they're going to be showing anyway. So, um, yeah, I don't know. But, oh, I can't wait for the cinema to open. Anyway, so the kids and I, we are going to go out for a pizza tonight. Um... I've booked a table because last year, again, when the restaurants and things all did reopen, I did get caught out a bit because, of course, you know, I didn't really realise that you had to book. I mean, stupidly, why didn't I realise? Who knows? But, um, yeah. So, obviously, because we've been having a bit of a sort of, you know, trying time, I thought it would be really nice for the kids and uh, me to, um, you know, have a bit of quality time and go out and yeah just just have a bit of downtime and you know do something really nice and really different because you know they've been such a brilliant help and um they've all been oh just amazing children so yeah i wanted to do something kind of nice for them really 
So yes, that's the plan. Tonight we're going to go out for a pizza in a restaurant. Wow, how exciting is that? Um, fingers crossed, it's all going to be good. I mean, I'm yeah, I don't know quite. Well, I mean, I assume it's just you know, once you're in there, you're you're in there. I assume we have to wear masks to go into the restaurant, but not once we're in there, if you see what I mean. So, yeah, anyway, it will just be nice to actually be out and about, to be honest. So, yeah, that's what we're doing. I think it's um, 6, 6 or 6.30. We have a table booked. And, yeah, looking forward to doing that. And then tomorrow night, um, my son, my oldest son, who he's got his girlfriend, you know, he's invited her parents around for dinner. Um, I've met her parents a couple of times. They are lovely, lovely people. But I mean, of course, I don't know them. Um, but yeah, they're going to come around and have dinner with us. Um, so yeah, he's going to cook, which is awesome, obviously. That's, you know, that's really great. I'm just going to try one with a 12 by 12. Um, yeah, he's going to cook. I'm not sure what he's cooking at the moment because uh, when I did the food shop at the weekend, I bought a few different things and I bought some meatballs. So I did say to him, you know, do you want to just do pasta and meatballs? Because that's a really nice, just easy, you know, easy thing to cook. You can just roast some vegetables and make a really nice sauce to go with it and, you know. But he said that apparently, because obviously he's kind of said that we eat a lot of vegan food, because of course, you know, I really like kind of vegan food. They have said that they would like to try some vegan food. So he's then like, oh, what shall I cook? Well, I've got quite a few vegan cookbooks. So I said, well, you know, have a look through the cookbooks and see what you fancy. However, he is at college on a Tuesday. So he doesn't get home till a bit later. And obviously Tuesday is the night they're coming. So as you can imagine, it was only so long before the conversation got back round to unless I would like to cook for them. So yes, at the moment I've kind of said, well, you know, I think they'd like you to cook really. Because, you know, you've invited them round and sort of suggested that they come round for your cooking. They'd maybe feel a bit cheated if I then cooked. So we'll see but I did say well why doesn't he cook something today when he comes home from work you know something that's going to keep nicely for tomorrow so uh, we'll see we'll see whether he does that but yeah at the moment he's kind of just wondering what to cook I think but anyway so that will be nice and you know how cool is that we're kind of seeing people going to a restaurant we're having people inside our house you know who uh, they actually haven't been to our house before obviously because you know i mean he's been with his girlfriend i'm not actually too sure but maybe seven months or something like that so i mean a lot of the time they've been together obviously has been locked down um yeah so anyway that's going to be really nice I mean, it would be so much nicer once the weather cheers up properly because, you know, then we could just kind of be in the garden and, you know, all of that kind of stuff. And um, I guess then he could do a barbecue. Although, to be honest, I mean, we're not very good at barbecues. I mean, some people take them really seriously, don't they? We're very, very, very unimaginative. And, um, yeah, I mean, if barbecues could be any more basic, honestly we make like the most unimaginative boring stuff on a barbecue but you know I'm just kind of thinking he would maybe enjoy that more although I mean he quite likes cooking to be fair I think it's thrown him because they kind of said oh we you know we'd really like some vegan stuff so uh, we'll see how he gets on anyway but yeah he's not phoned me so far I mean it is quite early you know I've only just kind of come back from the school run but He's not phoned me or anything to ask me to pick up extra supplies or anything. So I'm assuming that he's thinking he's going to go with stuff we've already got. Right, so let's count up how many that we've made here. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've done eight. So let's decorate this one up because actually I probably should do one that's actually double-sided. In fact... 
now thinking perhaps we'll, we'll just pull in the journal and we will just see if we can decorate the one that we've glued in here I don't know really whether it kind of needs any decoration to be honest I mean it looks pretty pretty nice anyway doesn't it but this journal I've got quite a floral theme going on with um you know lots of black lace and things like that so we could just kind of decorate this up to be in keeping with this journal I'm thinking I've got these gorgeous black applique flowers so um Sarah the lovely Sarah who comments regularly so hi there Sarah if you're watching uh she said the other day in a comment that she really likes it was a type of place and of course I'm not going to be able to pronounce it or I'll probably even remember it something like no are you do you I, I don't know it was something like g-u-i-p oh I can't remember maybe u-r-e I'm not sure but anyway lace and um i i said to her i'd never heard of that you know what what is that kind of thing i'd never heard of that but i was off to ebay to check it out and see what it was well lo and behold it is exactly the type of lace that you know i absolutely love and when i was googling that i then came across all these lovely appliques that i'd never really came across you know come across before and i love all my applique kind of little fabric flowers and they had loads in black, which, I mean, of course, I love using black in journals. So how cool is that? So thank you so much, Sarah. I had never heard of that. And, um, you know, that's absolutely awesome to now know what it's called and have been able to obviously use it. So, you know, I'll search, search for it. So I'm thinking I might have her here just on there. So I'm just going to undo my string yeah I'm going to just glue her down there she looks really pretty doesn't she she is just from my curator's collection um hmm. she might be from the portraits i think yeah pretty sure she's from the portraits curator's collection portraits so i'll just glue her down yeah it's really weird i'm getting really hot so how peculiar. We've had quite a lot of rain over the last, you know, couple of days, like over the weekend. Yeah, it seemed to rain kind of a lot, which was such a shame because, um, you know, you can't really do a lot when it's raining, can you? And like I say, I mean, it was still, you know, lockdown. I mean, it is kind of, well, I don't know whether it would be classed as lockdown now. I guess it probably wouldn't. Okay. So I'm going to just have that black flower again because obviously I have a lot of black going on in this journal. So I just want to keep it, you know, really nicely in keeping with what else I've got going on in here. So like that. And then I'm just going to just dab a bit of hot glue there onto those leaves. Yeah, that looks really nice. And then I'm wondering whether I want anything here. Um... I wonder whether I want another one of those flowers. Let me just cut another one of those flowers from the the length. I think I bought three meters. As I say, I mean, I just got it from eBay, and um, yeah, it came really quickly. I can't remember when I ordered it, but maybe Thursday, and then by uh, by Saturday, I think it arrived. So it was nice and quick, which is brilliant brilliant service I think I might just have that flower there and to be honest I mean to me that's all that needs really I don't think it really needs anything else you know that's tying the two you know the two sides in it's tying the black into the journal it's quite a florally pinky kind of journal as well so we've got we've got florals we've got pinks we've got blacks you know all the all the stuff tying in there so again just pop a little bit on there to pop those leaves down okay yeah okay yeah I think that's probably it and then just again wind that round can't even do it sort of like that really oh I love that 
So again, just to kind of show you then how that's going to work, we then undo the string. And in this case, I've paper clipped it down for an extra, you know, to hold it in. But as you can see, I mean, now it's been in for a few minutes and it's been paper clipped down. It's, you know, it's laying quite flat anyway, but then it just folds out like that. And then obviously you can fold it back like that with your journaling space there. So, I mean, they're really nice, aren't they? You know, and I think, yeah, quite quite versatile. As I say, I do apologise for that shoddy um, start to the video. Obviously, I should have really done like a prototype properly instead of just actually folding it and sort of thinking, oh, I've, I've folded that, that's going to work. But, you know, like I say, I mean, you women 